Welcome to my blog today. I'm Dave Whitney and in Australia it is August 7th in Canada and North America here. It is still the 6th although it won't be for much longer. About uh, 5 minutes to 11 uh, on the Friday night here. So I have to be pretty quiet tonight. I have to keep this reasonably low level because my beautiful wife Amy is in the bed behind me that I would normally be behind me in the video which is why I've spun the camera around and I'm now facing this fall here. Uh, and I'm trying not to disturb her very much, although she's probably laying in bed cursing me as we speak. Mm. So uh, then my little girl Ariel, who is, uh, who has graced a video or two, is uh, also in bed and I don't want to wake her up as well. But I do still want to get this out to you and it's been a busy day so I'm trying to just squeeze it in there. Now, uh, you know, there are so many so many technically proficient players on YouTube that sometimes it gets a bit humbling. And, uh, and there are, you know, you can, you can click on YouTube uh, and search for guitar stuff and in 13 seconds you have a video of someone who is able to rip up and down the guitar neck in, in amazing fashion. Like just, just rip up and down it with, uh, with incredible fluidity, okay, and, um, and pace. Now, it's very impressive uh, as, a, as a technical thing, okay? But as a musical thing, it isn't always that interesting to listen to, uh, especially once you've listened to it over and over again. And, um, and I guess certain, certain individuals would look at that as being the be-all and end-all of, of you know, playing, how fast, how fluid you can play. But it, to my way of thinking, it isn't, and I'm not. Uh, I'm not wishing to sound condescending when I say that, uh, because I totally respect people who do all that sort of stuff. In fact, I totally respect anyone who's given the guitar a go at any level. Um, be you the best in the world, or be you the uh, the guy who picked it up two days ago and is learning to play "Smoke on the Water." I have full respect for the efforts, you know, because for me, guitar is not a destination, it's a journey, you know, playing is always a process of growth and development and, uh, and when you're laying on your deathbed and you take your final breath, right, just as you exhale, something cool probably pops into your head that you should have played at a gig back in the 90s uh, and you'll never get a chance to do it, it's a growth process. So, uh, so where you are now is simply where you are now. Okay. What I'm really interested in is can I help you go to the next level? Can I help you to just put one foot outside of your current existing box and, uh, and start to give you the seeds of a new developmental process? So, when it comes to these up and down million mile an hour arpeggios with a little tap at the top and all that just to extend it, um, and, like, or when it comes to just any arpeggios, Going beyond major and beyond minor starts to bring you into the realm of more interesting music. And more interesting music is really the future uh, of everybody who plays guitar because you can't just rest your hat on doing the same major and minor up and down uh, arpeggios. And most definitely you can't do it every song in a show or every solo on an album or anything like that, otherwise you might as well record one and just copy and paste it in with your Pro Tools rig. And this lesson, oh, not this lesson, but this talk that I'm going to play a bit when I do this talk, but this talk is about adding other notes into the arpeggios and perhaps even slowing them down and having you listen to the beautiful music you can actually create using, well, you know, using tools that you would normally just use for speed. Okay. I'm going to use an arpeggio, right? It is a sweet pick arpeggio. It, uh, right? It's a C major arpeggio. I didn't, don't have a choice. As, uh, there's no reason as to why I chose C. It just, it's just there, and why not? So C major arpeggio, right? And C minor arpeggio. They're the ones I'm going to uh, I'm going to be playing with, and I'll be using some uh, some other ones from the um, the key of C major as well. 
uh, to, to demonstrate the musicality of this whole process I'm trying to instill in you now. Well, I'm going to add the ninth into this equation. Now, what is the ninth? If, you, if you've never heard of the ninth, right, you, know, you may have heard of it but not really know what it is. It's pretty simple. Okay? When I look at a scale, a major scale, right, I have seven notes in the scale and the eighth note is the octave above it. Well, the ninth is the next note above that. So, if I'm playing a C, right, and here is my octave, the note above that, a whole step above that, in this case, the D, right, is in fact my ninth. Now, okay, so, there's my C, there's my octave, there's my ninth, okay, and this note is D. Now, if I played it back one octave, it would actually be called two, it would be like add two. So, the ninth is an octave up addition, and sometimes it could be two octaves up, but it's I still refer to it as the ninth myself. You know, I'm uh, I'm not sure if anyone is going to you know go beyond uh, a thirteenth as an additional note. You'll still just write thirteen or eleven or nine. And um, anyway, so instead of through uh, a very, very simple thing, for example. So here is C9, C9, G9, A minor 9, F9. Very, very straightforward. C. Thank you. 